Hello everybody. Uh, we're going to do some right triangle trig, mostly Sokotoa, which some of you might have heard before, but uh, to get started here, let's talk about the anatomy of a right triangle. So what are all the parts to the right triangle? You've heard these terms, well, a couple of these terms before, so let's take a look at the hypotenuse. We've worked with this one. The hypotenuse, remember, is something that is always located across from the right angle. So the hypotenuse would be this side. And of course, the opposite and adjacent are kind of new terms and that they depend on whatever angle we are using. So let's say we're using this angle right here. Okay, if we use that angle right there, then the opposite side of that angle is going to be the side that is directly across from that angle, which would be over here. And another way to think of it is it's not touching the angle at all. So it's right there and there. These sides are touching it. And the adjacent side would then be the last remaining side, this one right here. So the adjacent side is always made up of one of the sides that the angle is made up of. And the opposite side is a side that is directly across from the angle. So like here's the angle here, straight across from there is the opposite side. Okay. If I move the angle over here, then that switches these adjacent and opposite. So the adjacent now will be over here and the opposite then will be over here. So remember the opposite side is always the angle that is directly, or the side that's directly across from the angle. That, notice the hypotenuse doesn't change at all. It's always opposite of the right angle. So those terms are gonna be really important to understand when we're working with Sokotoa. Let's take a look at the first part to Sokotoa. So here we have a right triangle and we're missing a side here. And so we're try gonna try to find X. And so far when we've had right triangles, what have we used for solving for missing sides? We have used the Pythagorean theorem, but in this case, we can't use a Pythagorean theorem because how many sides do we have? We just have one side here, 12. We don't have any other sides. But in geometry this year, we learned that if we have triangles that have two angles in common, like in this case, we have a right angle and a 34 degree angle, so we have angle, angle, then these two triangles are gonna be similar. This little guy down here, this little triangle, with the same two angles, are going to have proportional sides. And so when we have right triangles, if you have one angle of a right triangle, you actually have two angles, which means all right triangles that have a 34 degree angle are going to be proportional to each other. And therefore, all the ratios of their side lengths are going to all be the same, which is what this chart over here is all about. So if we look up and I highlighted in this chart a 34 degree angle, the ratio of, and this is what the sine is, the sine function is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, okay? And so if we look at the angle, we have 34 degrees, the opposite side of that angle is going to be right here. And the other angle, the other side that we're working with is the 12, that is the hypotenuse. Okay, so then the sine function is defined as the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse side. And that will always be equal to 0 0.5592 for a 34 degree angle, no matter how big or small the triangle is. So that information will allow us to solve for a missing side when we are only given one side to work with and an angle. And then keep in mind there's a warning here that uh, Sokotoa, it only works for right triangles. So all this stuff 
is only for right triangles and so therefore you can't use it unless we have a 90 degree angle. So what we'll show you here is how this all works out solving wise. So notice here we have our our 34 degree sine measurement is 0.5592. So when I write this out, I'll say, let's say I write out, let me get the right pen here. Okay, let's say I write out the sine of 34 degrees is equal to, and that's equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. That's where the so comes in for so katoa. So katoa. Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. That's the so part. So that would be x over 12 in our case. Okay. So you see where the so katoa comes in. You get a little highlight going here. So sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Right? Same thing right here. Sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. It's just a little mnemonic that helps us remember what the ratio and the sides are. So now we have sine of 34 degrees is equal to x over 12. Well, we know because of the similarity that the sine of 34 degrees is always equal to 0.5592. Every single time, no matter how big or small that triangle is. So what I can do then is go ahead and replace the sine of 34 degrees with 0.5592. And that is equal to x over 12. And so right there, then I have a proportion that I can solve. And you solve proportions using your cross products. So x times 1 is going to be equal to 12 times 0.5592. However, nowadays we have calculators, so we don't really need to look up these values in a table anymore. So what we're going to do then is use our calculators, and we're going to go ahead and solve this that way. So what I, when I write this out, I would write out sine of 34 degrees. Keep in mind, this sine of 34 degrees, this business right here, this sine of 34 degrees stuff, that's just a number. Okay, don't get confused because there's letters in there. These are not variables. It's just telling you the sine ratio of 34 degrees. That Remember, that's always 0.5592. So when I write this out, I'm going to go like this. I'll say, use my cross products. So I'll go... 12 times sine of 34 is equal to, and remember sine of 34, that's over 1, is equal to x times 1. So when I write this out, I'd say 12 times the sine of 34 degrees is equal to x times 1, which is just x. And so then I'll pop over to the calculator and I'll make that calculation. So I'll show you how to do that here. I'm using my calculator on the computer. So let's see here. I'll go to the calculator. And it was, in this calculator, I have to type in the angle first. So I'd say 34 sine. That's going to be 0.5591. Same value that was in that table. And I'm going to multiply that by 12. And I have 6.71 rounded to the nearest hundredth. So let's go back to our work, and let's go ahead and write that in, 6.71. So x, whoops, x is equal to 6.71. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the uh, case when my missing value, my the variable I'm solving for, is the hypotenuse. It just looks a little different when we solve this. So I'm going to clean this one up, and uh, we'll go ahead and look at this one. So 
So now down here we have the two values, same two values here. If you look at the two values we have, we have the hypotenuse opposite the 90, and we have the opposite side that's opposite my 34 degree angle. And so when I go to set this one up, it's going to be a little different because it's going to have the um, hypotenuse is the missing value. So I'll go ahead and write this out. I'll say the sine of 34 degrees, which remember is just a, it's just a value, 0 0.5592. So the sine of 34 degrees is equal to, and then it's opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, it's going to be 3.35 over my hypotenuse, which is the x. Okay. And so now this is a little different because my variable is in the denominator. So when I go ahead and solve this and do my cross products, this one's going to work out a little differently. So let me get a little more room here. So I'll go ahead and cross multiply here. And that means I want to take x times sine of 34. And of course, this is over 1, so then it'd be 3.35 times 1. And so when I do that, I have x times the sine of 34 is equal to 3.35. Okay, and I want to solve for x, so my variable, my variable is right here, this x, so how am I going to get that x by itself? And remember, the sine of 34 is just like a number, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by the sine of 34. So I take both sides, and I divide them by the sine of 34. And what happens then when I do that is these two values, the sine of 34 over the sine of 34, cancel out. And so when you are solving and your variable is in the denominator, you end up having to divide to find your, your missing value, whereas up here, we ended up multiplying. So then this is going to be x equal to 3.35 divided by the sine of 34. So I'll show you how to do that over here in the calculator part. Let's take a look at the calculator again. And we got to do 3.35 divided by, I'm going to use some parentheses here, because I have to hit 34 and then sign. And then I'm going to hit enter. And that would be 5.99, which is pretty much 6. And I kind of did that to show you because I halved it. So, like, if you look here, my x was 5.99, or really it's basically 6. And if you notice, the two triangles that I picked, they're basically, well, they're, they're proportional because they have the same angle measure. So this one is 6 to 3.35 here. And this one was 12 to 6.71. So 12 and 6 are uh, a 2 to 1 uh, ratio. And 6.71 to 3.35, uh, give or take some rounding there, is about 2 to 1 as well. So that's uh, an example of how to find sine using, or find a missing side using the sine ratio. So let's jump over and do the same thing, but now we're going to work with cosine. And so this is just a very similar process, except for we have different sides here. So if we take a look at what we have, we have the hypotenuse again, and we don't have the opposite, we have the adjacent. And so when we're working with the adjacent and hypotenuse, we are going to use ka, that's the one with the AH in it, and so that is the cosine. So cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're going to do the same exact process that we did, except for we have the cosine function.
So let's go ahead and take a look that, at that. Let's set it up. So here we have the cosine of 71 degrees. Cosine 71, and I highlighted that value on the table over here. That's 0 0.35, 0 0.3256. And that's, of course, the same no matter how big or how small that triangle is. For every 71 degree right triangle, the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse is always equal to 0.3256. So this would be the cosine of 71 is equal to, and now we're missing the numerator, x over 14. Okay, to solve that, I do my cross products, and x will be equal to 14 times the cosine of 71 degrees. Get your calculator handy, look that up. In this case, I know the cosine of 71 from reading it from the table, this would be kind of an old school way, is 0.3256. So I just take 0.3256. Let's just say we didn't have a calculator, but we had the table. So I take that and multiply that by 14. So what is 0.3256 times 14? Take a calculator, divide that out, and that will be your x value. So I think 0.3256, if I remember right, times 14, that's going to be 4.558 or 4.56. So x will be 0.4, let's see, I forgot what I said, 0.4, or 4.56, yep. Okay. Holy cow, that's horrible looking, but we'll live with it. Um, same thing down here, same type of problem as last time, but now when we look at this one, we are going to be missing not the adjacent side, but we're going to be missing the hypotenuse. And so remember, if we're missing the hypotenuse, then we're going to have to end up dividing by the cosine of 71 to find our answer. So let's go ahead and set this one up. Let's, let's clear this out of here. This is, that's horrible looking anyways. So let's go ahead and set this bottom one up. It's another, it's a smaller one. And let's say we have the cosine of 71 degrees is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse. In this case, the adjacent we have is 2.28. And you might notice that I made this one 2 to 1 ratio as well. So this would be 2.28 over x. So some of you students who are catching on here might anticipate that x here is going to be half of 14 if you're if you're being if you're sharp. So let's go ahead and solve that and let's let's set up our cross products. So we have x times a cosine of 71 degrees is equal to 2.28. And so to solve this, I got to divide both sides by cosine of 71. So in this case, I'm going to divide by the cosine of 71 instead of multiplying because my variable is in the denominator. So 2.28 divided by the cosine of 71. Let's run that, 2.28 divided by cosine of 71 degrees, 7.003, so it was about half. So that means this value x here is going to be 7. So we found that x equals 7. So that's an example of using the cosine function. 
and we have missing numerators and denominators. So let's jump and do the last one, the tangent, the TOA part. So SOCA TOA. This you use TOA when you have, let's see, if we have 22 degrees, the adjacent is the X and the opposite is the 42. So here we have the OA, the O and the A. And so if we have only O and A, that's the TOA or tangent function. So the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent of any right triangle. And all those values are located in this table here. Or, of course, you use your calculator, which is what we do nowadays. So let's go ahead and set up this tangent function. So here we have the tangent of my angle is 22 degrees. So tangent... 22 degrees is equal to, and remember, tangent of 22, what is that? It's 0 0.404. Okay, so that's just a number. So the tangent of 22 degrees is equal to 42 divided by the missing side x. And here I have a proportion, and anytime you have a proportion, you can use the cross products property to solve it. So Let's go ahead and, and multiply my cross products here. X times the tangent 22 is equal to 42 times 1. So X times the tangent of 22 degrees is equal to 42. So we have our missing value in a case in this case, the missing value is in the denominator, so I'm going to end up dividing. So x is equal to, and after you've done this for a while, you get the hang of the process. If it's missing in the denominator, you divide. If it's missing in the numerator, you multiply. And so then I'm just going to kind of skip that step of writing it all out there. And I'm going to take 42 divided by tangent 22. Make that calculation. 42 divided by tangent 22. So let's see here, 42 divided by tangent 22, and that's going to be 103.9, or 103.95, so we could call that 104, pretty close. So we'll call that, we'll just call that 104 here. So this side right here was 104 units long, which makes sense because 22 is certainly the smallest angle, so opposite of that is 42. And then we know this angle right here, because if you know two, you know all of them. So this angle right here is actually 68, because if this is 90, then these two have to also be complementary or 90. And so this angle is bigger than that one, so this side should be bigger as well. Um, before I wrap this up, just a couple of points here that you might get confused on is if we go back to the calculator, some things to pay attention to are that it's in degree mode. There's some things that are, there's some other measurements, um, units that are called radians. And if you have it in radian mode, your values are going to be a lot different. So make sure your calculator is in degree mode, not radian or gradient degree. And then also these buttons right here with the sine negative one and cosine negative one, these we're going to use in the next video to find the angles. So make sure that you're using these buttons right here. And depending on your calculator, sometimes you have to type the value in first. So like, let's say I want to do 45, the sine of 45, I have to type in 45 and then sign. But if you're using the calculators in the cupboard in my classroom, the Inspires, you'd, you could type in and you'd hit the sign button first. So you could hit the sign button first and then 45 degrees. But in this one, that doesn't work that way. So watch out for that. Um, so that is pretty much it with the Sokotoa. And You'll have some chance to practice it.
and you got to practice it to become proficient with it and you know they're it's all different so all different types of missing values so go back to this and remind you that whatever angle you have whatever two sides you're using that dictates which function you're going to use sine cosine or tangent based on if you have the opposite and hypotenuse you're going to use sine if you have the adjacent and hypotenuse you use cosine ka and if you have the opposite and adjacent you use tangent or toa so hopefully that helps and uh, one last little bright note here is that the reason why I'm doing this lesson and I'm gone is because I'm home and we just had a baby and that new baby is right here, little guy. So you can meet Arlo. This is Arlo and his brother Finnegan and his sister Nova. So we will or I will see you soon enough and hopefully this video helps. Bye for now.